Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Steve, Steve Felkner, KE5SF. And he is having trouble uh, with a new transceiver and an old amplifier. It says, my question is, I'm using my FT991A without the amplifier at 20 watts and the SWR is high, but when I use the FT991A with the AL811H amplifier, I have normal SWR. Now every time I turn on the radio, I press the tune button and tune the radio. And even then without the amp, I get a high SWR. Why? Well, let's take a look at what's going on here. But before we do, I wanna pay a special thank you to Jacques Bellard. Um, who is my most recent patron, joined just today. Thank you very much for your support. You too can become a patron by going to the link right at the bottom of this video. Now, um, the basic problem he's running into is he's using an old amplifier and a new radio. Let's take a look at the whiteboard. He's got an FT-991A which is a new modern current still being sold radio okay and he has an AL 811H which is an 800 watt tube amp now you could say that this is current, it's being sold today. However, this is an ancient design. This is a very old amplifier designed back when the so-called exciters, this is called the exciter, and this is the amp. It takes about 75 watts, so it says seven, five watts, to drive this thing to full power. And then this goes out to the antenna. Now there is a bypass switch here. And if you turn on the bypass, this signal goes straight through the amp. It doesn't do anything to it. And it goes out. I'll show you one. If you look right down here at my amplifier, this is the amplifier right here. And um, there is, I'll just turn on the power supply for it. If I can find the on-off switch, there. Okay, this is the amp right here. And we put this on, we've got some error lights. We pick the band we're going to work. And when the, the light is on, this will take the signal output from the IC7300 and amplify it. If I turn that off, I am in bypass, okay, and the signal now will just go straight through the amp like it isn't even there and out to the antenna. Okay, so in the FT-991A is a tuner, I'll just call that a tuner, and an SWR. This allows the tuner to tune up and you see the SWR that you get when you put the tuner in. And then this is connected to the output here, okay? Now, if this were a modern amp, you would assume that the input is 50 ohm. The output of this is 50 ohm, okay? And you would turn off your tuner and you would ignore the SWR meter because the place to measure the SWR is over here. Okay, and the place to put a tuner is here, if you use a tuner, which you would not normally with this antenna or with this amplifier, and I'll show you why. Okay, the 811A H 800 watts for the domestic market. It's 110 volt input. 
So it puts a fairly heavy load on the circuit, but not to the point where you need to run 220 to it, although you can. So if you are amplifying SWR meter off, tuner off, 50 into here, this should match. You have your 811A and it has a Pi output. This has a tunable capacitor a fixed inductor and a tunable capacitor. Now you'll say, wait a minute, that looks a lot like an antenna tuner. Well, it is. It's in the shape of a, like this. And so that's why we call it a Pi network. It has nothing to do with Blueberry Pi. It's Pi, the Greek letter. This one right here is called the plate. And this one is called the load. And you'll see both of these on tube amplifiers. And there are instructions on how to tune the plate, how to tune the load. And you need your amplifier connected. I'm sorry, you need your antenna connected when you do that. Okay. Now, the 811H, the Pi network, is a matching network. And what does it match to? It matches to the antenna. So, back in the day, we didn't care about the SWR of the antenna because the Pi network would match the input Im or the output impedance of the finals to the input impedance to the antenna through this. Uh, today, what we do is we do a T, two capacitors like that, and then this goes to an inductor. That's variable, that's variable, and that's variable. That's why you see three knobs on modern tuners and only two on the Pi network. But, and this is important, we plug in the antenna and tune the Pi network, which will match the amplifier to the antenna. If you switch antennas, you're going to have to retune. Okay? But here's another thing the old tube exciter, and I'll just call this a tube. Uh, radio. The term exciter is only important in terms of there being an amplifier. Otherwise, inside the radio there is a driver and a fi the finals, but then those actually, you've got more finals over here. The tube radio going into this, you can tweak. Again, it would have the um, plate, load, and with the amplifier on, you tune the plate and load so that this radio is operating correctly. Okay, now there are other wires coming out of the back of this thing. You've got an ALC, ALC, and a transmit control that actually comes from the radio over to here. That tells this to go in the transmit because uh, it's bypass on receive. And the ALC tells the radio, the, the exciter, how much to cut its power so that it's fully driving the 811, okay? Now, I know this is getting a little complicated, but this is the important point to understand. This has an input network, okay? And it's not guaranteeing 50 ohms. It's some impedance. And you can tune your radio, plate and load, to feed the amplifier okay. Now, let's take this tube uh, driver out of the picture. Okay. This thing right here wants to put out 50 ohms, it needs this to be 50 ohms. There is in the manual of the amplifier a process for tuning this so that it looks like 50 ohms to this. And you need to follow that process in the amplifier's manual. Okay, 50 to 50, it should show an SWR of one-to-one, one. okay? You should not need to use your tuner. 
If for some reason you can't get it to exactly match, yeah, you can use your tuner, but that normally is not best practice. This should be one-to-one. -one. Note that what you're adjusting is in the amplifier, not in the FT991A, okay? So that'll go straight through, and then the, and the uh, Pi Network in the amplifier matches to the antenna. Now, one of the nice thing about tube amplifiers using that Pi Network output is it will match to just about anything. And of course, these go into here. Now, they've got the same connectors on the back. You've got two connectors, one that's called transmit. Um, there are a variety of names for it. Uh, you look in your manual, see which one it is. It drops to ground uh, when this thing is transmitting, which will key a relay or complete a circuit for a relay in here. And then the ALC comes back and knocks this back to the point where you're not overdriving the 811. Okay. Now, what do you do if you want to operate with this in bypass? If you put this in bypass by using your bypass there, it bypasses the amplifier. So the amplifier now has nothing to do with anything. And the Pi network in there is not in the output. This does not act as an antenna tuner. Okay, so now this sees the antenna itself. You can now use your SWR meter for this and your tuner for this. Or you can put an outboard tuner out here that has a higher range to get you into that antenna. But Positively, for sure, make sure this is in bypass when you're using the amplifier or have a different route around it um, so that it doesn't use the 811, okay? Um, my recommendation is that you use an antenna analyzer here and get this antenna as close to 50 ohms um, at zero angle, uh, 50 ohms as you can. You'll probably get it down to about 1.6. It's probably all the further you can go. Okay, and this tuner here can handle that just fine. And then your amplifier will be going into something that's reasonably close to matching. Now, okay, new radio, old amplifier, very old design amplifier. Why do we still have tube amps? Because they're still cheaper than transistor amps. But if you do get a transistor amp, all this goes out the window. Okay. You're going to have an amp that's transistor amp. You're going to have an exciter that's, well, let's just call it your FT991A. The output of this goes into the output of this. It's 50 ohms, 50 ohms. And the output of this goes to your antenna. This is 50 ohms. Now, what do you do if the antenna is not 50 ohms? You need to put a tuner. A high power, we just call it HP, not Hewlett Packard, high power tuner. Okay, in here, because this wants to see 50 ohms. There's no Pi network on the output that allows you to adjust. This is why we talk about this tuner. Now, if you put this in bypass, just leave this alone and use this tuner to tune the antenna. In fact, when you first set this up, before you turn on the amplifier, uh, tune up as though the amplifier were not there using this amp this tuner, not the one in the FT991A. Turn that off. Okay. Tuning this will only affect this if the, the amplifier is off, but you got 50, 50, 50 here. So forget this tuner. Okay. Use this tuner 
right here and when you get it set up you can switch on your amplifier and everything will be copacetic okay so let's uh, take a look at what I, I might else have said here okay yeah um, so I think that helps understand uh, you've got um, what is it now oh new wine and old skins uh, is a, a a 2,000 year old expression that uh, talks about the idea that you're trying to use an old amplifier which is a very different design than a modern transceiver and you're not guaranteed a 50 ohm input into that 811 let's see AL811 AL811H which by the way is an Ameritron uh, and uh, amplifier just like mine here and uh, MFJ is the owner of that brand right now okay and they still sell them and you can get them new but here's the point there is a provision in the input of this um, amplifier to tweak it to 50 ohms so the radio looking into the amplifier or the exciter looking into the amplifier will be happy. So you're going to need to tune that to make sure. And you measure this by using the SWR meter in your rig without turning on the tuner. You tweak the amplifier until you read the lowest possible SWR on your radio, which may not be one to one. It may be 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 to 1. That's fine. If it's up closer to 2 to 1, now we need to start either putting a tuner in between or using the automatic tuner in the radio. Now, when you are amplifying, the tuner in your radio does not affect anything except the match between your radio and the amplifier. The Pi network output, the tune and plate of the amplifier are actually a tuner that will match your antenna very nicely. Modern solid state amplifiers do not have the equivalent of a plate and a tune. They don't have a Pi network output, so they cannot act as antenna tuners. You will need, if you're using a solid state amp, an outboard antenna tuner either that or fix your antenna so it's got good SWR. That's what I have to do with my station. I do not own a high power tuner. So therefore, I have to fix my antennas so they're less than about 1.6 to 1 uh, SWR and then the tuner runs straight in there because mine is a solid state amplifier. Okay, Steve, I think that answers your question. I hope that works for you, and uh, there's lots of things going on, lots of pieces, but it can all be put straight very easily. So, uh, Steve, thanks very much for your question, uh, and there you have it. If you would like to support this channel financially, you may do so by going to the link at the bottom of this video page. And until we next meet, 73.